Hi, I'm Pastor Aaron, Redeemer Lutheran Church. People come to my office, they look around at all the little trinkets I have sitting around the office, and they notice the armadillo I've got sitting on my desk. And, and they want to know, why do I have an armadillo on my desk? Now, some people think that uh, it's because it's a Texas thing. And they're not wrong. Armadillas are a Texas thing. But that's not why I have an armadillo on my desk. This armadillo reminds me of a spiritual truth my, my father taught me when I was growing up. St. Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. And that includes all of us. That was God's view of our souls when we were born. Physically alive, but spiritually dead. And because of that, there was nothing we could do. We couldn't make a right decision. We couldn't make a right action in God's sight. That's where the story of the dead armadillo comes into play. A dead armadillo... Well, when it when you know it's dead because it it goes literally toes up. There's no questioning he's dead. And in the state of being dead, he can't has no desire of his own. He he can't do anything. He doesn't respond to threats. He doesn't respond to to uh, enticements or anything of the sort. He's dead. Dead is dead. And that's what Saint Paul says. You and I were by nature, by, by the fact that we were born sinners. And because we were born spiritually dead, eventually we would die physically, but ultimately eternally. Unable to make any decision toward God, any to do anything good in His direction, this is where God intervened for us. St. Paul says, but God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions and sins. It is by grace you have been saved. Now, I for one would never want the task of having to try to resuscitate a dead armadillo. To me that would be disgusting. Thankfully no one's asking me to do that. But what God did for you and me in Christ Jesus was understood correctly, even more disgusting and humiliating. He, he went around to our dead souls and breathed new life into them. Now, that wasn't the disgusting or humiliating part. What was disgusting and humiliating is how he was able to do that. What enabled God to do that? St. Paul says he made us alive in Christ Jesus. In order to make us alive, God had to send his son, not just to live for us, but also to die for us. To get down and disgusting and dirty with sins. Not sins of his own, but our sins, your sins, my sins. And, and Jesus carried them to the cross, and there he, he suffered them and washed them all away and gave his life. But God, who is rich in mercy, accepted his sacrifice and made him alive again. Physically, he raised Jesus from the dead. And by the same power that God has raised Jesus from the dead, he now breathes new life into dead souls like a dead armadillo and makes us alive again. When did that happen for you? Well, only you would know that. It happened for me many, many, many years ago on October 30th when God called me into the waters of baptism and washed away my sins and clothed me in the holiness of Jesus and called me to be his child, his son. It is through the waters of baptism that God made me alive in Christ. And this is how God promises to work through his gospel, even through baptism, for everyone, even you. Jesus promises then that not, not only will he give me the, the life to live now, but the power to show that in the way I conduct my life. And ultimately, by the power of his resurrection, he will raise me and you at the last day to live before him with a new glorified body and soul in his heaven forever, never to die. That's the heart of the gospel we celebrate here at Redeemer Lutheran Church, and I invite you to join us 
Continue tuning into these devotions. Join us for online worship available on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. Or just stop by on Sunday mornings and join us for worship. We'd love to have you. And remember, at Redeemer, you won't be just another face in the crowd.